One final topic in vibrational spectroscopy is actually combining rotational and vibrational spectroscopy. All right, what do we mean by this? Well, here is a vibrational energy level here, and here's another vibrational energy level up here. Let's make these kind of wide. And as we said, most of the molecules will be in the lower energy vibrational state at room temperature, and here we have a higher level vibrational state. Well, superimposed on these states, the vibrational states are rotational states. So we have here, like this, some others, and similarly the higher energy, the excited state vibrational energy level, will superimposed on it of a manifold of rotational energy levels. So going from here to here will be vibrational, and going from here to these will be rotational. And this is rotational. So let's start from here. And here we can go from nu equals zero to say nu equal that. So this would be j, j equal zero, one, two, three, j equal zero, one, two, three. So it goes zero to zero. Here we can go one to one and so on. Here, delta j is equal to zero. Let's start here and go up one. So we go from the new equal zero, j equals zero, to the new equal one, uh, j equal one. And we can go again from that, go up one like this. Or let's start here and go up, go down there. So this is uh, j equal 1, nu equals 0, to j equals 0, nu equal 1. And we can start here and go up this way like this. All right, so we've grouped these terms, or these transitions, into a j equals 0. These are grouped into a, sorry, a delta j equals 0. Here, delta j equal plus 1. And here, delta j equal minus 1. All right, so these are called branches. This is called the Q branch, where the J does not change. The uh, R branch, where J changes by minus, or sorry, the P branch, where J changes by minus one. So we say that's the P branch. And the R branch is where J uh, changes by plus one. All right, well, so instead of just having a single transition going from one vibrational state to the under, other vibrational state, you have a series of transitions corresponding to different changes in uh, delta J. Now this is forbidden, this particular one, because remember the for vibrational spectroscopy, the selection rule is delta J equal plus or minus one. Delta J here is zero, so a zero to zero transition is not allowed or one to one. However, these are allowed. So, do we actually see that? Well, yes we do. Here is the actual rotational vibrational spectrum of HCl. This is HCl. Now, right here, right in the middle, is the change in vibrational quantum number plus one and the j equals zero to j equals zero but we don't have a peak there because the delta j equals zero is not allowed although it is allowed in some cases but it's a forbidden transition all right to the right and left of that what you have are the differences in rotational energy levels let's see if we can figure this out so it looks like as you go uh, here to here this would be the r branch those are higher energy, so this would be the R branch here. The Q would be right in the middle, but we don't see a branch there because that's forbidden. And then these are lower energies by since delta J changes by minus one. So this would be the P branch. All right, now I don't know where these PQR comes from, but um, apparently that's what the spectroscopists decided to use back in the 1930s and 1940s. This will um, 
these correspond to different transitions where delta J is plus or minus one. You might see that each one of these transitions ha is actually split. Why is it split? Well, if we look at HCl, HCl has two isotopes, H35Cl and H37Cl. Each one of these will have a different vibrational frequency so the vibrational frequency is different and therefore each one of these that are split into two lines corresponds to HCl35 and HCl37. Which corresponds to which? Well recall that the uh, frequency omega is equal to the square root of k over reduced mass mu so something that has a bigger mass has a lower frequency so the one that has a lower frequency that little shoulder here corresponds to 37 h 37 cl and the one with the larger one h 35 cl that's the lighter mass which will have the higher frequency this by the way is being plotted as a function of frequency okay and note that um, although it's a little risky to judge intensities, but it looks like the chlorine 35 isotope has a larger intensity than the chlorine 37, so you would expect that the chlorine 35 isotope, just by those arguments, will be more naturally abundant. And in fact, that's exactly what you find. So, rotational vibrational spectroscopy. Uh, to analyze these, what you do is record all these frequencies and so on, and then you put them into the appropriate equations and from that see this is a combined <laughs> this is kind of cool you get two it's combined rotational vibrational so not only do you get vibrational information which gives you information about vibrational energy levels and uh, force constants and things like that you also get rotational information in other words moment of inertia and bond lengths well, that's like a two for one when you do a rotational vibrational spectro uh, spectrum all right, so that's it for vibrational spectroscopy. Oh, by the way, uh, since you're Chem BS majors, uh, you will actually do these measurements. You will actually, in the laboratory, obtain the spectrum, the rotational vibrational spectrum of HCl gas, and you'll analyze it and get uh, bond lengths and force constants and things like that in Chemistry 455.